Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Demon Slayer Season 1, Episode 17. So, I am looking forward to getting into this. We had a uh, really interesting fight last episode, finishing up the fight against the spider that the mother, which was controlling the other Demon Slayers through her web strings, and, uh, and we noticed that she was being seemingly, like, abused by father, really scared of him and everything, and at the, to the point where she just accepted her death when Tanjiro was heading at her. Tanjiro realized, changed up his form, and did, uh, I didn't write it down. Um, it was blessed rain after drought, I believe is what it was called, and it was, uh, a very beautiful killing technique, seemingly. Um, a very beautiful death for her. I really thought that was cool, how it just, like, silently went went through her and, and cut her head off, you know, so. Yeah, I, I imagine we're either going to be moving on to one of the kids, or father, or one of the others, because there are five in total. Um, so far we have Rui, father, mother who's dead, and then two others who I think both of them we've seen. There's one girl, younger girl, I think. It looks like she's in a kimono kind of thing, I think, uh, we saw. And then the creepy head that was, like, behind the tree, like, chuckling. But we don't have any other names except for Rui, so maybe Rui is next? I don't know. So let's just jump into the episode and find out, shall we? All right, we're going to start here in five, four, three, two, one, now. Okay. Oh, right. He heard her say that there's a blood moon here. Huh. It's just covered in blood. Ha <laughs> No, no. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. He could tell she was giving up. <laughs> He's fighting him. True. Supposedly, demons never banded together, and here's a whole family of them, so that is curious. Oh yeah, there was someone creeping up on Zenitsu, right? Those spiders are still around. Huh! <laughs> That's right, he is, I was going to say he can hear that, but he has good hearing. Oh, uh, is that one of them? Yeah, what the hell is that? No, <laughs> opening time, okay. God damn it. Uh, let's see. Fucked up spider. Thing. That's what I wrote down. I am hungry. Me want food. Me want eat. Mm-hmm. 
So is this going to be a Zenitsu fighting this little one episode? I wonder what kind of fight that little spider is going to put up. Unless it like transforms or something. But that thing is creepy as fuck. Also, how did these demons come about? Like, did they give, did father and mother give birth to the children? Or did they just turn other things into demons? But only Kibitsuchi and that one chick were able to do that. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jeez. Well. Ugh. Ugh. So, are they like experimenting on people? Yeah. So maybe is that how they got their kids? Did they somehow turn people into these fucked up things? Ugh. Ugh. Nope. So this is the one we saw creeping behind the tree before. Ugh. His bird looked really small in that shot. Fuck this thing. Ugh! Got a spider on it, or a thread or something already. Oh shit, he got infected already, what the hell? That's the sting that he felt. Well that's not good. We have to, uh, stop that. Just more and more exaggerated Zenitsu freaking out. Oh. Interesting. Was that Zenitsu, but with different hair color and being, like, punished? Are we gonna get some Zenitsu backstory, maybe? Oh, I hate, I hate... Will, will the Venom make him pass out, maybe? And he'll become a badass, maybe? Losing sentience. Ugh. I just hate everything about this episode already. Come on, Zenitsu. Ah, backstory! Here we go. Oh, look at this old badass. 
He has a scar, like everyone else has a scar. Did he dye his hair, then? <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Is this how he got his lightning powers or what? Oh, that's how his hair color changed. Okay. Jesus. Hmm. Alright, we're gonna get a... Okay. I want you to change too, buddy. Let's go. Let's do it. Some of his hair, uh oh. Or did he pull it out? Huh. Oh, he passed out. Here we go, here we go, come on. I'm ready. I'm gonna land on his feet like a badass. Here we go. Yes. Thunder breathing. Ugh. I friggin' evaded it midair. Yeah, seriously. You gonna take him out? He keeps trying to do first form, but he's gotta like build it up. Interesting. Does he? Hmm. Mastered one form. One form and ho- oh, nice. I kind of like that storyline of like only knowing one move but honing it to perfection. That's cool. Here we go. Six forms, but he only does one, okay. Hmm. <laughs>
All right. Oh. <laughs> Yes. And the music is crazy. I hate all of those things. Every single one. Oh. Who's this? Former Hashira. I feel bad for that, but it's just kind of funny that he's, like, picturing Nezuko already, someone who he, like, just met, and he's, like, worried about. But, I get it, he's just... Oh my god. Very, very patient master, I will say. <laughs> made a pitfall for him to trap him. Crazy old man. Oh, that's even worse. Why? How could... Oh. That's not good. There's no way he didn't get stung more. Oh. He's gonna burst out of it though. Oh, that looks so good. Oh. Oh. Yes. Thunderclap and flash. Oh. That's so cool. Oh, he's fast. Ha 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 ha. Oh, he jumped off the web! Into your little house, you little shit! Oh! That was awesome. Took his head off. We already have a name for this spider fuck. Oh, God, that was an impact. He just plopped right onto that building. Jeez. Alright. So does the poison stop because the spider died? Or we gotta we gotta save this man somehow? The birdie. 
Oh, the bird's upset too. I'm gonna go get help. Yes, never give up. Is there anything he can do? Oh, thunder breathing? Oh, okay. Yes, never give up. Ooh, you could hear the thunder. Hmm. <laughs> so, jumping in front of the camera. <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit. Well. That's not good. They have to go and save freaking Zenitsu. She's scared. Hmm. Uh oh, father. Uh oh, shit. What is that? Oh, he's got like a spider head. Oh, that thing's terrible. All right. Oh, here we go. Tanjiro, water wheel. Oh, shit. He's durable. Couldn't even cut off the arm. It's the first time we haven't... I think that's the first time we haven't seen Tanjiro be able to cut off a limb. Shit, that's the end. Uh, yeah, I think it's the first time we haven't seen him be able to cut off a limb with one of his water breathing techniques. Do, 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 do. Like, I remember in the first episode, or one of the, not the first episode, but once he finished the training in the final selection, when he fought that big blob monster with a ton of ha hands, um, I'm pretty sure he hit it with his sword at one point and couldn't pierce it. But I don't think he did a water breathing technique. I think that was just him swinging his sword, I think. But, yeah. Uh, spider, demon, dead. Alright. So there are three demons left. We have Father, Rui, and then that girl that we just saw this episode that said, I'll leave it the rest to you, Father. All right, let's see what kind of Taisho secret we're going to have this week, guys. And... Okay. Combine... Oh, Tales of a Demon Slayer Academy. What? Disciplinary Committee. Tress Coach. Oh, my God. What? Nezuko in like a school outfit. Oh my god. I like how she had like a piece of bread in her mouth instead of uh... Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Interesting. 
that is going to be it, guys, for episode 17. Yeah, good episode. Like, it was, I mean, it was pretty much entirely Zenitsu, but we got some Zenitsu backstory, which is cool. I, like, he's still not my favorite character. The whining and bumbling is just something that I kind of ignore at this point, you know? It's kind of like, I've accepted it as a part of the show, I guess, and I'm trying not to let it bring anything else down, so I just kind of like, I just kind of like push it aside whenever I, whenever it starts occurring, you know, him, him just babbling on about not wanting to die and stuff like that, which was a good chunk of this episode, but we did get a lot of flashback stuff for him, um, so... I guess the talk about his stuff is... So he did have black hair before. He was struck by lightning, which is where he got the uh, the hair color change. The interesting thing is, is... He was taught the thunder breathing techniques, and he got struck by lightning. Like, that's a pretty big coincidence, right? Like, I feel like, anyway. Um... And, like, I almost want to go back to that scene, because it just seemed, like, so crazy that he got struck, wasn't it? Um, let's see, where was... Okay, so... Okay, so I guess the storm clouds were rolling in, right? Yeah, the, Did he, like, summon them, though? They came in so fast. Calm down, Zenitsu, you have potential. I've just about had it. And then he got struck. I love the, I've heard the voice actor before, um, of the, the grandpa, the master, uh, and I, I love that voice actor, he always does an incredible job of, like, I don't know who the voice actor is, so I don't know if he's an older guy, but he always does a good job of sounding like an older guy, and then even, like, doing that yelling and everything, too, it always sounds so good, but, but yeah, so I don't know, I watched it again, I don't know if it was him freaking out that, like, summoned the lightning clouds. I still don't even know if the lightning he has and the water that Tanjiro has is anything that's visual. I still don't know if other people can see it or if it's just... Although, he heard the thunder. Tanjiro heard the thunder. So does that mean that they are actually... con? Like, did he actually conjure, like, lightning and thunder and stuff like that with his attack? I don't know. I'm still very confused on that. <laughs> so, interesting. But, uh... But, yeah, so... Uh, so I wonder if during his training he conjured the, the lightning. But, alright. So, he... Was saved from debt... Um... By the Master. And felt a... I guess because he was saved from that debt, he felt a debt to train with him. He said, like... Or, or maybe he had to, you know? I don't know how that all worked with him covering the debt and everything. But he said, like, you know, maybe you only did it because you wanted to train a swordsman, you know? Um, so he saved... The master saved Zenitsu from his debt and then started, started to train him. And that's how they met. And, uh... He saw the, the potential in him, which, I mean, obviously we see when Zenitsu fights, and, I mean, usually it's when he's unconscious, which I want to talk about that as well, um, is when, like, I guess the fear doesn't get in the way, and he can just use his, you know, attacks that he's learned, or attack that he's learned, um, but I really, 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 really like the whole, uh mastering one move he couldn't learn the other form so he mastered that one to perfection that's really cool because uh i know there's like a saying of like don't fear the man who's mastered ten thousand punches i think it's like a like a bruce lee kind of thing or something um someone said it anyway i don't want to like falsely claim who said it but uh, don't fear someone who's learned a thousand punches. Uh, fear someone who's mastered a single punch a thousand times or something like that. I definitely butchered the way that's supposed to be said, you know. But essentially, I think it's leading to the idea of this here 
of Zenitsu mastering one move rather than knowing a handful of moves. He's just brought this one to perfection. So it's like just an insanely powerful move. The bad side is, is he does the same thing like that guy noticed. The same wind up over and over and over again, you know. So people can read that and exploit that and everything. But if he's trained it so much and got it so powerful, maybe it doesn't matter, you know. So... That was, a, that was a really cool thing that I wanted to talk about. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that when you train one move so much, it might be something along the lines of the reason why he does it so well when he's passed out has to do with the fact that he has trained so hard on that one move. Like, maybe if he didn't train so hard on that single move, he wouldn't be able to do it while passed out. But, sorry, I keep yawning. Um, at this point, it is, like, muscle memory, and I think that's why, I think it's the muscle memory that's allowing him to do it while passed out, which is a cool little detail where they didn't really go, they didn't really explain that to us because they don't have to, it's kind of like, you know, showing us that, that that's probably why, you know, so that was pretty cool. Um, I still don't know, I talked about it a little bit during the reaction, I still don't know, like, how this family works, you know, like, like Tondro said, usually spy, or usually demons don't work together, and there's, like, a father and a mother, and then three kids, like, how did the kids come about? I'm guessing they didn't, like, I'm guessing the demons didn't just bang and have kids, maybe they did, maybe that does work, I don't know. Uh, but were they, were they all, were, like, all five of them turned by Kibutsuchi? Is someone else able to turn demons? Like, because, I mean, we know that, uh... Man, I can't remember her name now. But the, uh, the one lady turned the the kid. She was, like, turning terminally ill people into demons, or trying to, and only succeeded with one. And she hasn't even been able to, like, replicate it since. So she was able to do it once ever, you know, was was it something like that where someone else figured out how to do it? Or did Kibutsuchi just make five demons, you know, and just say, hey, you guys are a family, you know, do your thing, or I don't know. It's, uh, I'm intrigued by that. We did see an instance where this one spider demon kid, like, was poisoning people and turning them into spiders... So maybe it has to do with something like that, you know, something similar anyway. I don't know, but, but yeah, that thing was nasty. It was just a, it was just a head attached to a spider body and there was a bunch of little baby ones that were like that too. Uh, and then, you know, looks like some of the transformations either weren't done yet or were just like unsuccessful because there was like one guy hanging there with like a claw arm and that was like it, you know? So I don't know if he was, like, experimenting with, like, different venom doses to see what he can do, or was he just in the process of turning into one of those little baby ones, you know? I don't know. But whatever it was, it was messed up. But it was, like, a really... It was really disgusting. But it was really cool seeing Zenitsu use his ability. Now... There are six forms, uh, I, I mean, I already kind of talked about it, but there are five other forms that he doesn't know, so um, I hope they stick with the idea where he's a master of one for, like, a really long time. Maybe in the long run, I'd be okay with him, like, figuring out some of the other moves in a pinch, you know? But I like the idea of him mastering one, and I feel like maybe it would... It might deter the story from them using that one to its fullest potential if they gave him other ones, if that makes sense. Because if he suddenly has five other moves that he can do, I feel like they're going to want to make those look special, which is going to make the first one not look as special, you know, so. Um, his master was a former Hashira, so that's cool. We still don't really, I mean... I imagine that's the same, I don't know if they ever said that, but I imagine that's the same with, uh, Orokodaki, right? I imagine he used to be a Hashira in the Demon Slayer core, but, uh, but I feel like they never really said it, but here they said, it. they're starting to talk a little bit more about the ranks and everything, uh, now that we're kind of getting a little more into the show, which I kind of like that they didn't throw that at us a lot in the beginning, because it's kind of hard to understand, like... All the rank names are so hard for me because they're 
you know, Japanese translated to English. It's not something, you know, like, we have the, um, did I ever write it down? I don't think I wrote it down. Um, it's like the Mikoto, no, that's a person. Um, I don't, I can't remember the rank that Tanjiro is, but we have Hashira, you know, like, there's, there was a whole list of them when he became a Demon Slayer. They did tell us back then, but they weren't really using the ranks much, and now they're starting to. So I like that they're kind of easing us into it. I should have, um, if only I started doing these notes earlier, I would have had uh, at least what Tanjiro's is. Because, like, right now I have the new notes from this episode. I have the previous episodes that I can call back to, which is really nice. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying the the note system I have going, I just gotta keep it organized, um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, interesting, hmm, but, yeah, I don't know who it was he was talking to, he was talking to a random guy in the flashback saying, like, you're not worthy of being trained by the master and stuff like that, like, he's a former Hashira and, and look at you, you're just a, a whining baby, you know, so, I wonder if that's going to be a storyline, or I wonder if that guy is ever going to come back into the story. They, like, didn't show us his face. I don't know if they did that on purpose, or if it just didn't matter that much, you know? So, I wonder how that's going to, like, chime in, you know, is, like, with, with that character. I imagine he's going to show up again since we didn't see his face, and there's a reason we didn't see his face, but I don't know. Anyway... They, they really just focus on his neck and, and stuff like that. <sighs> oh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it was really just a build-up to that move. I imagine he's not going to die. I feel like either, either Tanjiro and Inosuke are going to somehow get to him and help him. Although they have the father to deal with now, so I don't know. He did do his breathing form to slow the venom, so that should buy them more than 30 minutes, so maybe that'll give them time to deal with this. Or the bird will run in, instead of running into Tanjiro and them, will run into Gyu, and Gyu will go over there and save him before going over and helping Tanjiro and everything. I don't know. But I, I can't imagine that he's going to die, especially after getting all of his backstory info this episode and everything and character building and all that and he seems like one of the one of kind of like the three main characters of the show so like I don't know I, I can't imagine him dying that's all I'm saying but but yeah it's uh I'm I'm just wondering how he's gonna be saved is what's gonna keep it interesting for me uh, I laughed a little bit during his backstory scene because it was a little sad, you know, he was, as much as I, and it was really hard because I don't sympathize for him much because of how whiny he is about everything, you know, but it is a sad thing to die alone, and him talking about having no one, you know, he has no family, he has no friends, the only person he has is his master and everything, you know, so, so him talking about, like, not wanting to die alone and everything, and in the flashback, you know, he was thinking about that, and, and how he only had Master and everything, but one of the things when he was, when he was thinking about the people that, like, don't care about him, one of the people that showed up was, uh, Nezuko, and I just thought it was interesting, it was just funny, because, like, it's someone that he just met, so it brought me back into the mindset of Zenitsu freaking out about someone he, like, just met, you know? And not, not making a whole lick of sense to me uh, about caring about the opinions of someone he just met. But, you know, that's just his personality, I guess. But, but yeah. Anyway. Um... I enjoyed the episode. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I, I like the flashbacks, too. It, I think it made me adhere to Zenitsu a little bit more, even though I think his whining and complaining are always going to bother me, you know? But, anyway. Uh, at least we know, like, he's always been like this. And, and there was that one line, I forgot to mention it, um, where he, he said that he wants to change, which is a good start, you know? Uh, so maybe we'll see him 
progress and move a little bit away from this and be a little bit more confident and, and stuff like that and not just flee and cry at everything. I mean, I imagine he's still going to do it for a while. I don't want him... At this point, they've developed his character this way. I don't want him to suddenly just on a dime be like, oh, I'm brave and confident now, you know? It's got to be like a... It's got to be like a character arc for him, you know, so... But anyways, that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out my Patreon um, for early access for these episodes. See a couple ahead of time on there. As well as my Patreon exclusive shows where you can see shows like Cowboy Bebop, Squid Games, stuff like that on there. Other things being exclusive to my Patreon as well. Or just early content and all that stuff. Link in the description or it should be popping up on the screen. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye bye.